hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we will continue our discussion with radar systems and engineering and uh, so far we have discussed about uh, the basic introductory concepts related to radar the generalized block diagram representation the radar configurations about uh, the basic uh, parameters that are measured using radar and also about the basic uh, concepts related to electromagnetic waves so in this video we are going to discuss some more uh, properties of electromagnetic waves that will come into play in our discussion related to the uh, next set of discussion related to radar which is uh, intensity of the transmitted waves and the received waves by the antenna interference of the waves electromagnetic waves and polarization so we'll start with intensity so we know that uh, the radar systems they use an antenna to convert the radio frequency signals from the transmitter block into an electromagnetic waves which radiate it into a fixed direction okay in a certain direction towards the target that radio frequency signal or the electromagnetic waves they move towards the target S upon striking the target they reflect back and is collected by the receiving antenna so here one of the most important things that is considered or that also has a deciding factor in determining the efficiency of the radar system is the uh, power density of the electromagnetic waves you know the uh, intensity of the electromagnetic waves the power content in the signal so that can be defined as the intensity of the electromagnetic wave we are talking it from the point of view of uh, transmission and reception of the signals transmission of the radio frequency signals reception of the echo signals from the target so the intensity is defined as the power per unit area of the propagating wave okay so rate of change of energy with respect to time so here another concept will come which is the isotropic source so the point from where the electromagnetic waves are transmitted from the antenna that is considered to be an isotropic source so what an isotropic source is that it is a point source which in which from which the electromagnetic waves that are radiated they are of the same intensity having the same power content uniformly in all directions okay so the transmitter which transmits the electromagnetic waves that is considered to be a i consider to be an isotropic source transmitting the same power content uniformly in all directions so we can uh, visualize it like this we will also discuss it during the antenna theory the discussion on antennas also it is related to radar so here we are going to discuss it in short let us consider a point source isotropic source s now we can visualize that it transmits the signals in spherical wave forms like this okay which move outwards so we have discussed about the huygens principle you know the wavelet theory in optoelectronics it is also a part of optics so it is very much similar to that so here s is the isotropic source and these are the spherical waves emitted from isotropic source each having a radius r from the uh, center so for the first waveform that is having radius let's say r1 then we have the second waveform r2 r3 so r3 is greater than r2 is greater than r1 like that so the power density of these electromagnetic waves in terms of spherical waveforms can be determined by the mathematical equation of this so each spherical uh, 
these waveforms is treated as a sphere and the surface area of the sphere is given by 4 pi r square so the power density is the total radiated power from the source divided by the surface area of each sphere let us consider the first sphere it has a radius let's say r so the power density will be p the total radiated power from the source okay from the source divided by the surface area of the sphere at this point at the first sphere it is 4 pi r square okay total radiated power divided by the surface area the surface area of the spherical wave so this is very important so we can relate it with Huygens principle the wavelet theory so like that the power content at each and every point of the this 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 whole uh, distance away from the source can be determined by drawing a line imagining that there is a circular waveform at any point finding out the radius then we can determine the power content at any point on in space away from the isotropic source just draw an imaginary circle find the radius the radius the distance from the source and then we can determine the power content the power density by this formula okay next is the superposition of uh, the electromagnetic waves sorry it is electromagnetic waves so the superposition of uh, electromagnetic waves uh, how does it happen so when two electromagnetic waves they interact okay when uh, uh, when they combine with each other it can be of two types okay depending on the amplitudes of the two individual signals or electromagnetic waves they get they either get added or subtracted so depending on this two types of interference happens they interfere with each other and it can be of two types constructive interference and destructive interference let us understand them so when two electromagnetic signals having the same frequency okay same frequency that is very important means time period is also the same they have different amplitude let's say different amplitude but same frequency they interact with each other their corresponding amplitude values they get added up okay they get added up so when they are in the same direction it means positive peak followed by positive peak negative peak followed by negative peak so the positive peaks get added so the total positive peak the value it increases the net amplitude increases in the positive direction also the corresponding negative peaks they get added up so the total negative peak of the resultant wave it also gets increased so it is constructive interference the net amplitude of the signal is increasing positive peaks positive peak negative peak negative peak positive two positive peaks get added up two negative peaks get added up so that is constructive interference destructive interference happens when the opposite peaks the opposite half cycles they get added up the positive half cycle gets added with the negative half cycle the negative half cycle of the first gets added up with the positive half cycle so they are out of phase each by to each other by 180 degrees here okay so when they are in the same phase constructive interference happens when they are out of phase by 180 degree then destructive interference happens in this case they are of equal amplitude the both the waves so here positive followed by negative exactly equal the magnitudes are equal but direction is opposite in both the cases positive and negative half cycle so it results in complete cancellation so when the two waveforms they are of different amplitude in this case in these two cases the amplitudes were equal okay here the amplitudes are equal but they are in the same direction so it was double of the original waveform here the amplitudes are equal but they are in the opposite direction so complete cancellation here the amplitudes are unequal 
so here when the positive peak of higher magnitude gets added up with the negative peak of lower magnitude it results in some net amplitude which is less also the same case in the negative direction the negative peak is of higher magnitude the positive peak is of lower magnitude so it is a some value in the negative direction so it is also destructive interference so always remember constructive interference happens when two electromagnetic waves which are in the same phase interact with each other positive peak will get added up with the positive peak of the corresponding two waveforms negative peak of the first will enter, uh, get added up with the negative peak of the second waveform so there will be a net increase of the signal in destructive interference they are out of phase by 180 degree not 180 degree but they should be out of phase by some value so in that case the opposite half cycles will interact so it will either result in a complete cancellation or it will result in a lower amplitude signal in both the half cycles so the next thing which is of importance here to discuss is the polarization concept so we have already discussed it in the optoelectronic section too but here we'll discuss it in short so we have already uh, discussed in the nature of the electromagnetic waves that uh, they consist of vibrating or oscillating electric and magnetic fields okay in mutually perpendicular direction which is also perpendicular to the direction of the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave so we can visualize it in terms of the coordinate axis x y and z x can be treated as the electric field y can be treated as the magnetic field then z will be the propagation direction of the electromagnetic wave so what happens is that these electromagnetic fields electric magnetic fields they are in random directions they make an angle of 90 degree with respect to each other but they can be in any direction okay they will make an angle of 90 degree but they are randomly aligned so what is needed is to increase the efficiency of uh, signal transmission sometimes the vectors are needed to be confined to restrict them in one plane one specific plane let's say x y plane or y z plane or x z plane to restrict them in one plane it is necessary all the oscillating vectors mainly the electric vectors so the process of restricting the vibrating light vectors or the electric vectors generally the electromagnetic wave to restrict them in one direction or one plane that is called as the process of polarization or the phenomena of polarization so there are various ways of achieving polarization of the electromagnetic wave okay so what happens is there is a method of reflection refraction uh, there is uh, other process as well we will discuss it in detail now it is not required so just you understand that the process of restricting the vibrations of the electric vibrations of the electromagnetic wave the electric field vectors in one direction or one plane is called as the uh, process of polarization so here the plane in which the electric vectors are confined that is called as the plane of vibration and the vector the plane in which the magnetic field vectors are con confined that is called as the plane of polarization so as the electric and magnetic field vectors are in mutually perpendicular direction so the plane of vibration and plane of polarization will also be in mutually perpendicular directions so here uh, the electric vectors are confined in one plane the magnetic field vectors are also confined in one plane after polarization so the different types of polarized wave we'll discuss so the polarized uh, signals it can be of uh, linearly polarized signals in which the tips of the electric vectors which are the main uh, interest for us for electrical and electronics they move in straight line paths the tips of the electric vectors similarly in circularly polarized waves 
the electric vector tips they move in circular path and for the elliptically polarized waves the tips of the electric vectors they move in elliptical path so they are confined to one plane the electric vectors which is the plane of vibration but the tips of the electric vectors they behave in different ways either in straight line circular or elliptical path that gives different characteristics to the polarized signals so and each of these polarized signals are of interest uh, for uh, radar antenna uh, and other applications which impart different characteristic features to it okay so here we have discussed some basic uh, properties or phenomena associated with electromagnetic waves about the intensity uh, the power density the superposition and interference about constructive and destructive interference and about polarization so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much